All right, hello everyone. I am Erica Bucillo Adams, board member at Fountainhead, Rhode Island, and also director of external relations at Providence Public Library. And I'm thrilled to welcome you to our very first Fountainhead RI live stream spotlight. Um, I wanna do a quick shout out and thank you to our sponsors in Sparity and The Daily Note. Thanks so much for making events like this possible for us. Um, and I am beyond thrilled to be chatting today with Darlene Slaughter, VP and Chief People Officer at March of Dimes. Hi, Darlene. Hi. Hi, everyone. How are you? I'm good today. I am good. We're like hang, hanging in there in the COVID world. <laughs> As we all are. I love your background. I know I said this to you when we spoke a few weeks ago, but it's fantastic. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Well, I want to jump right into it and maybe let you introduce yourself a little bit and also okay. introduce uh, the March of Dimes mission and vision to our viewers. Okay. All right. So I am um, I, a chief people officer and I'm responsible for everything human resources within the organization. The human resource department reports into me. And so we have talent acquisition, learning and development, all of our HR operations. Um, and, and, uh, and then I'm also the chief diversity officer. So it's been quite busy uh, for the last couple of weeks and we're helping people to really understand race and racism uh, and, and implicit bias and all of those things that people that are top of mind for people. Um, we, I have, I've been at the March of Dimes now for about a year and a half. And before coming to the March of Dimes, I was also the chief diversity officer at United Way Worldwide. Um, and then the chief diversity officer at Fannie Mae, which is in Washington, DC. So I've been in the space of human resources and diversity for a, for a long time. And, um, you know, it's, it's great work. It's, it's really great work. And the March of Dimes really has a mission to support all moms and all babies and looking at the health of all moms and all babies. And you know, to this time is really critical for the health of moms and babies because many because of many reasons, right? One, COVID is a big factor. And I, I know we'll get into that a little bit later, but as well as racism and structural racism and how it impacts women in our communities and especially black women. Um, so it's, you know, there's a lot going on um, for the March of Dimes to be, and we've been around for, you know, 80 plus years. Um, it started in 1938. So, you know, we've longstanding mission in the community. Tell me a little bit about, you know, how the March of Dimes has evolved, because I know that March of Dimes is currently really focusing in on birth equity. Um, specifically, but that's not always where the focus area was. Right. So I'm sort of interested for people who don't know as much about March of yeah. Dimes or maybe have interacted with March of Dimes in a different way in the past, you know, how, yeah. how that evolution happened. Yeah. So, you know, in 1938, um, it started with Franklin Roosevelt, the president Franklin Roosevelt, and, um, you know, with him wanting to make an impact in the world. And so that's kind of where we started. In 1955, they created the vaccine. So it's, it's really interesting now that we're in a time where we're looking for a new vaccine for COVID. And March of Dimes was front and center in creating the vaccine for polio and helping to create that vaccine for polio. And during that time in the 50s, we really were focused on birth defects. So we really, you know, for the babies that were born um, prematurely or had birth defects, that was the big focus. Um, and in the 1970s, we started to do the marches and the March for Babies um, so that we, we used it as a fundraiser for our donors and to make ourselves very visible. And that was well attended. You know, people love the marches, people love coming together. Uh, and in 1998, as we started to move away from just so much the birth defects, we started to look at prematurity and folic acid and how that had, you know, how that helped babies and moms to hold on to the babies for the, for the nine months. And then in 2005, in 2005, we started really the conversation around preterm birth, you know, so that so the, it changed from birth defects to preterm births. And today it's changed to, while we still have a focus on preterm birth, at, in all of the other times we were focused on the baby. And in today's world, we're focused on the mom and mm -hmm. the baby. And you know, the really big push is it starts with mom. 
So if the mom is healthy, you know, hopefully healthy moms will have healthy and strong babies. And that's not always the case, even if, even with a healthy mom, but that's how we've moved from, you know, being very singular focused to now looking at the moms and looking at community and looking at all of the social determinants out there that are impacting a mother's health. So and it's really like that holistic look yeah, at the holistic approach yeah. at health um, and all the systems that are involved in that. Yeah. So I, I wrote this down because I didn't want to forget the exact statistic because I think yeah. it's really sobering and I don't know if a lot of our community members even realize this, but I know you know that the U.S. is among the most dangerous developed nations in the world for childbirth, yeah. which I think is shocking for a lot of people yeah. To, yeah. to hear, but in particular for Black women who are three times more likely than white women to die from pregnancy-related causes. Yeah. Um, so as you know, the March of Dimes I'm really interested in the work that you're doing right now in particular, and then we could talk to you about COVID-19 specifically and how that's impacted your work as well. Um, mm -hmm. But, you know, with this focus, um, the March of Dimes has now, how are you advocating to dismantle systemic racism in healthcare? And in particular, as it, you know, is, is focused on birth equity for, for Black moms. Yeah. yeah, you know, and and thank you for, for bringing that up because it is really um, it's staggering the numbers, right? So we actually in this country have uh, probably on average about two babies that die per hour that don't make it. So we have so many babies. We have about 30,000 babies e each year who don't make it to their first birthday, right? And you kind of think like, wait a minute, you know. It's just, it's a, you would not think that. <laughs> no, you would, not, you would not think that. And then when you, as you said, as you overlay um, the data and you look at black women um, and it's three to five times percent higher than all women. And it's not um, a certain group of black women, it's women at all economic status, socioeconomic education, you know, to the highest of height to, you know, to that, to that young mom who's a teenager, right? Many people will assume that it's, we're talking to young mothers and we're actually not, it's, it's, it's many, you can be highly educated, middle class, upper class, whatever class you want to be, and still have a poor outcome. Um, and so the Black woman many times has a poorer birth outcome than a poor white woman has, or a Latino. And, and when we say people of color, we are talking about those in the Native American community, those in our Latino community, those in our Asian community. So it's, you know, it really is daunting. Um, and it be, And it is a crisis in this in this country um, right uh, right now. And so the work that we're doing is really about bringing awareness um, to communities, bringing awareness to organizations that are partnering with the March of Dimes, um, lifting that up. Uh, we also have a very strong advocacy role um, where we have our leaders who are working on Capitol Hill. A lot of our, our babies that are born are absolutely using Medicaid um, as a part of that birth. So we're always advocating, not only in Washington DC, but around the country um, with our, with the, you know, with the uh, political leaders around that. And we also have created an implicit bias training um, uh, for healthcare professionals. And so what we, and that has become, you know, really big right now. So with, as we were designing it, then we knew, you know, when you talk about structural racism and racism, um, and implicit bias, and then what is what's the reason that Black women are ha having difficulties in this? And it's not just from a health health standpoint, but it also is from uh, the stressors in the system, the access to the system, the racism that actually flows through generations, yeah. right? And the impact that that stress has on that Black mom. Um, and as you can see, as the world has exploded you know, with the George, George Floyd uh, killing as we see the protest, you know, um, around Black Lives Matter, as we are all in a pandemic kind of world right now, like all of these things have come together. Um, and so I, us having this implicit bias training has been very powerful for many organizations um, to, to begin to have that conversation, to understand what that is. And, and the way we talk about it it really is not just for a doctor or for a nurse, but it's for anyone in that healthcare system. Um, because there are many, many touch points that a woman has during that nine month period. 
And so we really want people to really understand what those implicit biases are, um, how they show up, uh, how you become aware of it, because I don't think once you become aware of it, it you you could then begin to do something different about it. Yes, you know what yeah. I mean? And so that's and you can begin to notice the places where where that's active for you. Yes, yeah. yes, yes, and it's there, and you know, and it and it and there are biases against all of us for one reason or another. So and we all have biases, right? So this is not one group has a bias and another group doesn't. We all have biases. And some of the biases are actually good biases that kind of keep you safe. But many of those biases that happen, um, and it, and you know, many times when we say implicit bias or unconscious bias, the, the intention is not for it to be negative. It's just that people are not aware. Yeah. Um, and it's, a, it's just sort of in our system in which we all live, so. And then causing negative yeah. outcomes, unfortunately. Yeah, and it causes and yeah. it causes unintended um, outcomes, and and those outcomes are very much pointed towards people of color. You know, so black people, indigenous people, people of color. So, and then how has you know you just you mentioned COVID nineteen, um, yeah. which has disproportionately affected our black and brown communities here in the U.S. How has that? to push some of this, and you talked a little bit about how it's, it's pushed the March of Dimes work forward, but also, yeah. you know, what have you been doing to respond more immediately to the health needs of um, Black, Indigenous, POC moms and babies during this time? Yeah, so, so you know, that we're, we're, we're in the beginning stages and there's a lot of data, right? We, we know just from what we see on TV that this is new, this, and it's showing up in lots of different ways and lots of different people, and we're starting to see more and more information about how COVID is impacting um, moms and, and as well as babies. Cause we have this belief that babies and young people and school age children are not quite as impacted with COVID um, as you know, those in our older population. But right now our data shows that we have about 11,000 cases uh, in pregnancy for wow. COVID. You know, so we have 3 million people that have COVID in the United States, roughly 3 million. And we have about 11,000 that are pregnant. Um, we've had 31 deaths already um, that out of the 132,000, about 31 women have actually passed away. Um, and then we have about 3,200 that are hospitalized. And so that number, you know, as the, as the numbers spike in the communities, those numbers are growing. Yeah. And some of the data that we're also starting to see as has been on the news is the the um, um, the mom having COVID and many times the baby may be born without COVID, but it doesn't mean that the COVID can't pass through the placenta yeah. to the baby. So the more and more people are being tested, the more you see, you're beginning to see that it does impact um, babies and, and moms and babies. And, and that that's a possibility uh, for it. To and that is through. a possibility. Yeah. Yes, yes. And you're starting to see even with young, young people, um, it's, you know, the myth of young people may be carriers, but they may not get it. That is true. You may have a large portion of that, but it's not true that they won't get COVID. And it's not true that they will all survive COVID. Yeah. Um, so, you know, we, we, these are really um, um, times to be reflective, but times to, you know, to do a lot of work. And so the vaccine that's are, that are being uh, created now, we're, March of Dimes is really making sure that pregnant women are not left out of that vaccine, um, you know, because that's sometimes, you know, when you look at the numbers and you say, well, the numbers are not that high. So that's not really a test group that we need to focus on, but the March of Dimes is really wanting that community, the research, the scientific community, and we have uh, chief medical officers on board that really are staying in tune to what um, what's coming out from a vaccine standpoint, what's coming out from an advocacy standpoint, and from laws and things like that. Yeah. That's amazing. Um, I'm just, I'm listening to, <laughs> li listening to you talk about all this and thinking, you know, how can I personally help the March of Dimes? Like how can yeah. I yeah. support this really vital work that you're all doing um, while, while sitting at home? 
yeah, no, yeah. From, my, from my home office. And I'm sure that folks watching right now too are, are interested. So could you maybe share some ways that everyone can get involved with your work or help to advocate for these things? Yeah. So, you know, one, one way is you can certainly become a donor. You know, we love, we love donors. We love people um, who are willing to share and to give. Um, we, you know, certainly can get involved in the advocacy work that we're doing of how do you make people aware of this? We've actually created a report card uh, that, that actually lists, it's a very cool report card. It actually lists all the cities across the United States down to the county in which you live in. And we've given grades to those counties, um, those cities and those states in terms where, where we have birth outcomes, high birth out outcomes, low birth outcomes. Oh, wow. Um, and so that, you know, so there's a, we have a lot of information and a lot of content that we're building. We also have, um, which is very cool, a Facebook Live, just very much like this. We have a Facebook Live series that the president of, um, of March of Dimes is hosting with many doctors. And so, you know, and you can get information about pregnancy, what to think about, how to, how to think about it, um, where do you go for help? And many of these are healthcare professionals from around the country that do a Facebook Live conversation. So they have one coming up next week and they're usually on Thursdays, they're all recorded. So if you go awesome. on the March of Dimes website, you can actually see the past recordings oh, awesome. of the conversations. And it's pretty awesome, it is pretty awesome. And it's a great way to get a lot of information out there, uh, you know, um, for people who are looking for knowledge or for moms who are, you know, right now it's very, it's a, you know, I, I at this point now, it doesn't matter who you are. I think it's a stressful time for every mom yeah. to think that I am pregnant and I am going to have a baby and the baby is not going to not come because of COVID, right? And so, yeah. you know, with the hospitals being as they are, um, how do you keep yourself safe? And I think that's a big stressor for any mom, yeah. any mom that's out there. I completely agree. Or even for, for you know, couples and yeah, women thinking about maybe they were, you know, already starting to plan to have a baby this year. And it seems, you know, now there's this, this big question mark <laughs> around yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Can I put this on hold? Right. You know, um, and for those that, that can't put it on hold, yep. um, you know, trying to figure out where they are um, in their communities and what kind of support do they have. And so March of Dimes is, you know, we are very big in, in helping you to get to that place, that, that good place in wherever it is you are, uh, so that you feel like you have, you are informed. And I think one of the, one of the um, major factors that in, in some of the stories that you hear, and especially in for Black women, is taking ownership of your own health and the health of a newborn um, or the health of an unborn, right? Many times we, you know, we, we find a doctor and we feel like, okay, the doctor said, this is what's happening. This is what I should do. This is what, and we don't really think that this stuff could go wrong. So we're not really researching to find other doctors to, you know, to, to check the doctor against, right? We just say, that's my doctor. I, I enjoy my doctor. Um, and then something goes wrong and it's totally like feeling unprepared or feeling like you have no control. You know, I was talking to a young woman um, and her baby is, well, I think her baby is about two, two, year, two years old now. And she was sharing me her story. And I, and I could tell you when she told me her story, I could see the pain in her eyes as if that baby was just born yesterday. And, you know, and she said, um, I never thought that there would be a problem. And, you know, I thought everything was okay until she went into labor and she was working. Um, her doctor was part of a larger practice. And so she had been seeing her doctor all along. And then the night the baby came, her doctor was off duty. <laughs> so, so she now has, while she rotated through the practice, she now was um, working or, or, you know, being cared for by a doctor she had never no. been with yeah. ever before. And she just felt, you know, the baby came uh, early, early morning. Um, and she said the doctor just kind of was sort of like, well, we need to, we, you know, there seems to be a problem. We need to do something quickly about this right now. And so she had a C-section 
but that was never a conversation in her planning for this child that she would know think that she would need to have a c-section and she said she actually felt like the doctor didn't really give her much time to think through it she didn't have a lot of time to think through it and um, she felt that it was a little bit of you know and, and this is just a story so this is not all doctors right but she did feel as if the doctor was like, okay, I've been doing this long enough. I'm ready to get this over with to go. Right. Um, and, you know, and, I, you, and the baby's fine. She's fine. But it was really for her, it was traumatic. It was a traumatic birth experience. Um, and she was Asian. Her husband is African-American. And so she did talk about, you know, that she felt that there was a lot of bias towards the two of them. Um, in not providing the information and the support that she needed at that particular time. Um, so th these are the kinds of stories that are out there for many, many women. And many women don't share the stories. And, They're, you know. It's they, almost like it's ta it becomes taboo to, yeah, to share yeah, them. Um, yeah. But there's such a, I mean, I, that, that lack of agency in that moment, like where, like, and where does the bias, you know, is playing into why wasn't she given more time to make her own decision? You know, you're right. making your own decision about your body right. and the health of yourself and your child. And so often I think, you know, uh, women in general, like we, we know when something's off or we right. know when something yeah. doesn't feel yeah. right. Um, yeah, <laughs> and it's in learning how to, to stand up and self-advocate, but then having additional barriers. If you're engaged with someone, if you're a black woman, a woman of color, um, sure. you know, and you're encountering bias there and not being heard. Yeah. It is traumatic. It's hugely it's traumatic. Funny. Yes, it's very traumatic. Um, and, you know, and so what, what our role is to really help to educate women uh, so that they do know that they have choices and they do have options. You know, we have a lot of people on our staff who understand health equity, you know, really understand health equity. We have a lot of people on our staff who understand uh, racism and how that plays into you know, the things that are happening um, to, to, to many women, you know, um, not, you know, the, the, on, on either, either side of that racism spectrum, right, or that bias spectrum. And so, you know, and the people who work at the March of Dimes are extremely proud to be at the March of Dimes. We have many, many people who have been there for such a long time. Um, we have many women who actually had birth uh, traumas themselves, right? So they they yep. truly understand what it means um, for a mom who's you know afraid and and scared and not sure uh, and what to do. And you know when we when we talked earlier about this happens at all economic levels, right? We could think about Beyonce and her twins. We could think about Serena yep. Williams and her baby. And you kind of think about okay, these are women who have all the means to do everything at the highest level. And yet, you know, especially like Serena who knows her body in the sense of I have blood clots and this is how, you know, I have to, these are, this is why I wear a certain um, outfits because yes. they help with that. And then to have a doctor say, well, you don't really know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> no, like what you know, so you can imagine if I if you're Serena Williams and you you're know, literally one of the best athletes in the world. Yeah. The best athlete the, in the world. Yes. You have won an enormous amount of titles and money has come along with that. And a doctor who said, and you know, as a elite athlete, you know they know their bodies. And a doctor saying, Well, we're not sure that's what that's what's going on with you. Um and and that she had to advocate for herself. So if you think that she had to advocate for herself in that, how does a woman who doesn't have all of those means um, advocate for themselves or even know what to do and to be listened right. to and heard in that critical time, you know, in that critical time. So I think information is power. Um, and the March of Dimes is very um, in tune to giving information into the communities, into our corporate partners you know, into our donors. Um, and that's how people actually can get involved. Um, there are lots of different ways that people can get involved. I know that was a long way to answer that. Question. I loved it. No, it was <laughs> wonderful. I am aware of the time. I think we have about five minutes left. So I do want to ask you two, I'm going to call them like classic fountainhead RI spotlight questions. Um, okay. 
Yes. So the, the first is what three pieces of advice would you give to young professionals looking to build their career in HR and DEI? Oh, wow. So <laughs> I, I, so now we get to talk about me, right? Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, I think um, that, that those that are interested in it, you know, do the work. We have to do the studies, right? I, I came into this work through doing organizational development work. I have a background in organizational development. And then I was an HR uh, generalist. And then I moved into the diversity work and they're all connected. They're really all connected. There are a lot of places where they can get certification um, and to learn the foundation. And sometimes if you're in an organization, just ask, hey, can I work on this project? Can I be on an employee resource group or a business resource group? Can I take a leadership position on something? I, I would tell you many of us in the diversity space are always looking for additional support and hands to help us with the work that we're doing. Uh, so that's really out there. Um, really, again, do your work, do your homework, understand what it is. Um, and then don't be, don't be afraid to, you know, to start having informational interviews with people who are sitting in those seats so that they know who you are, uh, make yourself visible to them. So they actually say, oh, okay, you know, I've got an opening. I can take a junior person because I can, I can walk them through um, how to do this, but I just need the person who has a great attitude, yeah. a great desire uh, to want to be in this place and, and really, um, you know, want to make an impact. So I think there's just an amazing amount of things out there and especially right now especially yeah. right now that they're interested yeah. in getting in to be a part of a part of the work. Awesome. And uh, my last question for you, this is yes. a, another classic. Do you have a favorite quote or mantra that inspires you? Oh, you know, when I was early in my career, um, I, I got an assignment from one of my managers and he said, I want something for our leadership team. And I wanted to say this, um, that you have, two choices in life, excuses or results, and excuses don't count. And I will tell you that, you know, that so it could be the unknown because I don't know where he got that from, but I always, I love it because it forces you to go beyond what you think you've done. So when it, wherever you get into that moment of, I can't, I don't have resources, I can't get this done, people won't call me back or whatever, whatever, then you have to stop and pause and say, is that an excuse or yep. is that the end result? And, you know, when he gave me that assignment, I remember thinking, what in the world, how am I going to do this? You know, and, and, and I would tell you, it was funny on the day that I figured something out and I needed him to sign off on, to purchase this, these items that I was going to put this quote on, he was not in the office. So I had to literally kind of go like, hmm, so if I don't get it done, is that an excuse? So I went to like two people above him and I said, hey, he's not here. This needs to be delivered next week. And I need for you to sign off. Oh, on this. I love <laughs> I it. I need for you to sign <laughs> off on that. So it, it gave me the courage to do things that I actually didn't think were possible for me to be able to do. You know, so I love that quote for that reason. So whenever I'm feeling like I can't, I just can't, you know, and many times, I know we all have those moments. Um, is I think about, is it an excuse or a result? And if I it's, you know, and, and, and how, do you, what do you want to be known for? You know, yep. what do you want to be known for? So that would be my advice to all of those out there listening who, who are looking to do that next big thing, you know? Yep. I think that's excellent advice. <laughs> <laughs> I might actually use that with my children later. <laughs> that's right. That's right. That's a good right. one. Right. Is it an excuse yeah. or is it a result? Yeah. Well, we're almost at 1.30. Darlene, thank you so much. This has been such a wonderful conversation. Um, I yeah. do want to you know, say to our community out there watching, please do follow March of Dimes on Facebook and social media. Go to their website. Consider supporting them as a donor. Um, you know, Share the information with the people in your life who you think really need it. Um, yes. And you know, that goes for our Fountainhead, Rhode Island too. Please do follow us. We're on Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram. Um, and you might be seeing this on the Facebook Live um, blurb, but we do have our first virtual 2020 panel coming up on July 29th from 5.30 to 7.30 on technology and uncertainty. So check that out. Um, 
Uh, any parting words, Darlene, for, for the folks out there? <laughs> no, you know, I just want to say thank you for the invitation. Um, I know, uh, I think this is the first time that it's been live. And so yes. that is pretty cool. Um, and for, for people out there um, who are interested, if you go on to marchofdimes.org, you can get a ton of information. And if you need to get in touch with me, you can talk to Erica and, uh, you know, she can... Uh, we can, we can connect you to all the resources that you need. So thank you so much, Erica. This has been wonderful. Thank you. No, I've, I've really enjoyed it. And we look forward to talking to you again soon or at another yes. event. Yes. yes. <laughs> all right. Thanks, everyone. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.